Most teachers get into teaching for the obvious reasons. The money, the power, the women. I got into teaching for a very different reason. I like the look. I like corduroy and tweed. I like chalk dust on my pants. I want you all to take a moment to take a good look at all the teachers gathered around here today. And you can't deny it. Teachers are cool. <laughs> I didn't immediately set out to become a teacher. And so I was really surprised in New York to realize that just about anybody could become one. All you needed was a college degree. Uh, you could go in and fill out a yellow form and become a substitute teacher, or you could fill out a white form and become Mr. David, certified teacher. So I filled out the white form. I came home. Uh, I was the first of my roommates to have a real job. Uh, that was pretty exciting. Uh, it took two weeks for the fingerprints to clear. You know what that means, right? Yeah, clubbing! That's right. <laughs> It means clubbing. It means going downtown. So it was Monday night. There wasn't much going on. We went downtown. Uh, most of the, the places were pretty dead. Not a lot was going on. So we decided to uh, hang out around the World Trade Center. As a matter of fact, we planted ourselves at a picnic table right between the towers. And we were feeling pretty good about ourselves. Um, the World Trade Center was like a real symbol of New York City. And um, yeah, feeling that we were there, we had made it anywhere. Um, there's a song, something to that effect. And we were just feeling really great about ourselves. To put it in perspective for you, had the smartphone been invented, we would have spent the hour taking dope selfies. It was a big deal. But it was a Monday night, not much was going on, so we went home. And the next morning, uh, my roommate uh, kicked me in bed and he said, Hey David, a plane just hit the World Trade Center. We're under attack. And so we jumped up and said, well, let's go see it. So we ran down to the water and um, by the time I got there, there was just one smoking tower and I, I, I couldn't really understand what was happening. Uh, a lot of people were screaming and crying. That should have been my first clue. Uh, but it was really difficult to process. I remember like walking along the water trying to understand the visual trickery that one tower had somehow hidden itself behind the other no matter where I stood. And when I figured it out, I thought what everyone else thought, my God, the world is ending. And then not long after that, the second tower fell and a thousand of us standing along the water just stared into this empty space that once was. The next day, a thin layer of snow, of ashen snow, coated all of the five boroughs. New York's 9-11 uh, was pretty surprising to me. It was surprising to me because I think on some level I had been operating under the assumption that history had ended. Um, history seemed to still happen, but it happened in other countries or to other people. History had a way of happening to Donald Trump or Barack Obama or LeBron James. Um, it seemed that there were spectators and there were participants, and most of us were spectators. 9-11 changed my thinking. We are all participants. Uh, there are no spectators. History is alive and well, and we are all a part of it, and we are all in this together. Thank you. Thank you.